Do you want to know more about model railroad operations? Why don't you stick around and watch this segment, see how I did on my in-scale model railroad, the Sayer Secondary. <laughs> Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale. Welcome back. This is our next segment in our operations series. Um, so today we're going to be running the SA39 uh, that runs from Browns Yard down to Sibagaygi. But before we do, um, I'm going to go ahead and go back over to comments from the last video. So if you remember last time, uh, we ran the SA02 over there in Sayreville. And if you remember, I had that real high camera angle for you. So I had a kind of a bird's eye view. A lot of positive uh, comments about that. Everybody seemed to like it. Unfortunately, I already shot this video afterwards and it's not as high. So, um, but we'll, you'll see later on in the series, we're gonna get back high again. So the first comment is from 1990s rail fan. It says, hey, you got rid of the Roy Ashen Eclipse intro music. Um, actually, no, I didn't. Uh, that's still gonna stick around for my uh, layout construction and senior series. I just wanted to change it up and do something a little different so the Ops series has its own uh, music and the Shop series has its own music. So just kind of add in a little variety and make, uh, make it a little different on the channel. Next comment from uh, Maurice Grimes. Uh, one question, why wouldn't the crew grab the pickups as they went down the line first instead of a light engine move? <sighs> Great question, Maurice. Um, you know, I don't know. I just, that was the way I did it. Uh, not really sure if I think in the prototype, what would happen with any of the cars that had staged in Parlin would have gone with the, the engine to Browns to pick up the new loads. Unfortunately, because I'm still working on that cycle, there was no, um, there was no holdover loads on the, on the runaround. So that's kind of why it was a light engine move. So in the future, uh, the next time you see the SAO2, there will be loads on the runaround. So they will pick those up and take those to Browns with them. A lot of comments on the uh, tank car. Yeah, <laughs> off camera, my I, I jumped to grab that tank car. I thought it was going to go off. Um, so what's going to happen is um, right after my I got an op session coming up here in a couple weeks, uh, two weeks to be exact. And um, after that, I want to try and get it done before that session, but I may not be able to. Um, I want to paint it all up so it looks more like a finished uh, piece of track and uh, I'm going to put pe plexiglass on the three sides so this way we don't have any accidental derailments and cars hitting the ground. Uh, some other comments were saying hey you should just extend the bench work and all that stuff you know. Uh, I thought about it but then I really don't want to have to be reaching over for the lights and hitting scenery and all that stuff and just to get two more car lengths I'm just gonna leave it as that little removable section. Definitely want it removable because when I'm not using it, I don't want to come through the. I don't want people coming through the door and whacking into it. So uh, just keep that option to pop it off if I want to. Mike G. No, sir, I did not. I did not shove blind across that crossing. It was off camera. I made sure to stop my uh, gondolas sh about. I'd say about half a car length from the, the crossing. So, but thanks for noticing. Bunch of questions about the locomotive and the decoders. So that locomotive was an Atlas uh, B23-7, and that was in the keep it moving with Conrail scheme. Yes, keep it moving with Conrail scheme. If I'm just looking over to double check. Um, it has an ESU low sound decoder. Uh, it is the direct micro board with an um, Zemo eight millimeter cube speaker. Uh, another question somebody was asking is, do I have decoders under the layout to make the sound? No, it's all on board uh, the locomotives. Um, I talked about it in uh, YouTube Model Builders Live um, and some of my other, uh, my interview with Lionel Strang. Um, you know, these locomotives put off a good sound when there's no ambient noise in the, in the room, uh, fans running and all that silly stuff, and we got the camera, it's focused right on that, that area. The sound is like, it sounds great it sounds booming even in your speakers on your iphone it sounds really good but during the op session those little speakers have just the right amount of sound because with uh ho scale locomotives you may run into during a session where they're too loud and people can't talk and they can't converse or give orders and stuff but these in scale locomotives with that with that eight millimeter zemo it's just the right amount of sound we don't have to i don't have to adjust it up or down i just leave it stock and 
we get about four or five people in here talking. They can talk over like four or five locomotives running, no problem. So very happy with the, the way that ESU um, de decoders are working. Initially, before they came out, within the last year and a half, I was thinking I was going to have to put decoders with speakers in the background for, you know, for certain areas, but uh, don't really have to. So hope that answers a bunch of questions right there. 25 MFD. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Um, so to fill everybody in what we're talking about, um, MFD said, uh, good stuff right here at 3625. You saw you wouldn't clear. So you went right into plan B. Good switchman. Um, I appreciate that. And I've told you all in the past, I'm not a railroader. Don't claim to be maybe one day, but right now I don't have any experience. And, um, uh, it just goes to show you doing these operations. I have so much more respect for, uh, conductors and, and engineers and, the stuff that they go through it you have to be thinking three four steps ahead and you got to have a plan b in the back of your mind of what if that doesn't pan out and i counted wrong or i don't have enough space so i have total appreciation for for the job that those guys do and girls sorry uh because i know there's a lot of girls out there that are doing it too um so but just doing these operations uh these model railroad operations you're starting to pick up on i'm starting to like really get it now it's all starting to click so uh thank you another comment uh joe g uh he likes the uh the sound the sound effects uh just to refresh everybody's memory because i know it's been a while uh, that i'm running that through ed kapazinski's uh open so source software from his website and you can go to conrail 1285 and and he's got the uh the switching crew uh label right on his uh web page so you can go there and you can try it out and let me tell you once you do it's a lot of fun and it's well worth the time so thanks for noticing joe jeffrey i'm assuming the k is silent noop if i'm saying it wrong jeffrey please correct me um so jeffrey was saying um with pushing and pulling and telling uh the, the engineer over the radio to push or pull um his his experience was that they would just tell he would tell the uh, the engineer to um shove and then east or west kind of like that idea jeff uh it seems a little easier for me as a non railroader to think about um you know because you've got to remember which way is the locomotive facing is it forward or back and is he pushing or pulling so that makes more sense jeff i think i'm going to start doing that um uh so thank you very much okay and so uh that's all the questions and comments a uh, lot of a lot of support a lot of uh people were really happy with the uh the, the episode and you know what I'm very happy to be back doing it I love doing this stuff for everyone uh, I love learning from everybody especially all the railroaders out there who are watching this they're teaching me stuff as I go really picking up on it so uh, thank you everyone for all your words of encouragement okay so with that let's get to work uh, we're gonna go to Brown's yard we're gonna meet up with our crew the SA 39 uh, just to refresh everybody's memory SA 39 calls out of Brown's runs down the main line and cuts off on the Toms River Industrial to go down to Sibagaygi to work the plant down there. Um, so you can see from the map, uh, that's our, our route. Okay, so I'll meet you over there and uh, we'll get with the crew. Okay, so here's our train for today. Um, the locomotive that we're taking out with, this is 7776, this is a GP38. Um, the cars we're gonna be bringing in with us today, we are going to be bringing uh, Two tank cars, two covered hoppers, and two more tank cars to drop off. We also have our idler car in the rear, which is carrying our EOT device. And we're going to be picking up five tank cars and a covered hopper from Sibagaygi. So the crew's already got the train assembled. They've uh, conducted their air test, and we're ready to go. Uh, before we get going, um, we're going to get our Form D from our dispatcher. So Form D's going to be dated June 30th, 1988. C1012 CNE number 7776 crew of the SA39 circle line 2 operate in a south direction on single track between Browns and TRI dispatcher is JD time effective on form D is going to be 627 in the AM okay now that we got our paperwork all in order and we're all set to go uh, crew's gonna head it on out uh, on the main
Okay, so the crew of the SA-39 has reached the Toms River Industrial. They're going to call up dispatch, and we're going to get a second Form D issued. It's going to be Form D C-102, dated June 30th, 1988. And it's going to read 2 CNE number 7776, crew of the SA-39. Circle line 2, operate in both directions on TRI between Lakehurst and end of track EOT. All right, dispatch is going to be JD. Time effective on the fast clock is going to be 0652 in the AM. Conductor is going to get off. He's going to open the turnout for the Toms River Industrial. Alright, conductor's gonna line and lock the turnout. We're gonna contact dispatch. We're gonna report status that the turnout is lined and locked on the main. And we're gonna get cancellation of form D number C101. Time effective on the cancellation is gonna be 0658. Dispatcher is Desmond. So now our crew is on the Tom's River Industrial, ready to go to work. Okay, so our train's in position. Um, we are going to uh, pull in the plant. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the first two cars, and we're going to work uh, the steam plant over here uh, to move these cars around, because that's the easiest uh, way to switch this. So let me uh, drop some cars, and uh, we'll get moving. All right, so we're gonna set a handbrake. Uncouple, we're gonna run around these two cars. All right, so we're going to couple and connect. Or at least that handbrake. So I'm going to push these down so I can make room to make my maneuver. We're going to drop these cars here and we're going to come back in on the track too. So we're going to set a handbrake. Uncouple. And we're going to back up. All right, so we're going to couple and connect. And there are at least two handbrakes. So 
So now what we need to do is these are the empties. We're going to pull these out and swap them with the loads. And we're going to leave all four on this track to make more room to do our switches. All right. 7776, seven, uh, pull back four car lengths. All right, so the conductor's on the ground. He's going to operate the turnouts for the crossover. The brakeman's going to operate the other turnout. 7776, seven, push forward four car lengths to a couple. All right, we're going to couple and connect. We're going to release a handbrake on the one car. We'll pull this full string out and we'll dump it in here on this uh, spot. 7776, seven, pull back, five car lengths. right there. Conductor's going to operate the turnout. 7776, seven, push forward, five car lengths. Two more car lengths. One more. One half. That's good right there, 7776. So now we're going to set a handbrake. Actually, we'll set three, uh, two handbrakes on the last two cars. That'll hold the whole string and it'll set the handbrakes for, our, uh, for when we're ready to leave. So we're going to set uh, two. couple and we'll pull forward I'm sorry we'll back up okay so our next move we're gonna go back down the hill where we left those cars, we got to pick up uh, the next three in line. Um, we have a tank car that goes over to here, and we have our two uh, hoppers for over there. So we're going to go ahead and pull them up, and we'll get working on that. What I'm doing here is I'm dropping this tank car here on a number two track. So I'll leave us plenty of room on number one to work building 105. So I gotta set my handbrake. Uncouple. And we're gonna pull forward.
All right, so you know I changed my mind midstream. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pick up these two empties, and uh, since we're right here, we're back down. Seven, 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 six. Back up four car lengths to a couple. We're a couple up. We're going to release two handbrakes. And we'll pull forward. 7776, seven, pull forward uh, four car lengths. Seven 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 six. Back up. Conductor's riding on the rear. Go down. Pick up those other two hoppers and bring them up. You can see it's sticking out in between the buildings down there. One more car length. And we just fit. All right, seven, 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 six. Conductor's riding our rear. Switch the line for 105. Push back to my mark. One more car length. One half. It's good right there. All right. So we got these cars in uh, here. We're gonna set a handbrake on the last. We're gonna set handbrakes on the last two cars. This is where all we gotta do is pull our empties off the front end. And we're ready to go. Alright, the brake was gonna close that turnout. We're gonna back down, we gotta grab another uh, tank car and uh, bring it up here so we can work this. All right, so we're gonna couple and connect. Release the handbrake, now we're gonna pull them two tanks out of uh, building 108. Let's 
It's good right there, 7776. Alright, Brickman's gonna open that turnout. 7776. Push back uh, two car lengths, conductors running in the rear. Alright, so we're going to couple and connect. Release two handbrakes. Pull forward. Car length seven 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 six. All right, breakers gonna close that turnout. We're gonna back up. And we're gonna leave these these two down here. All right, we're set handbrake. Uncouple. Brake is going to open that turnout, and I'm going to do a delayed on couple here. And we're going to push back. All right. We'll set two handbrakes. All right, and we're going to pull four. All right, so we need to uh, reassemble our train now. So I'm gonna go down and pick up the box car on the hill, which is our idler car with our EOT device, and put them in there, and I gotta pick up these two and bring it over, and then we should be able to connect our train back to that. So we're gonna line lock the turnout for uh, building 108. I'm gonna back up and pick up these two tanks, and then continue back up to pick up the box car.
All right, so I'll uh, leave these two cars here, or these three cars. So I'm going to set a handbrake. A couple. Pull forward. Now I'm going to pick up these two out of uh, out of 105. Two car length 7776. One car length. One half. Six feet. Good couple. Now I'm going to take these two cars and drop them in here so that they foul the crossover just enough so I can get back to the other end. Alright, so I just realized that this is, there's not enough room, so I have to do it one car at a time. So I'll leave that there, set that handbrake. Uncouple, pull forward. All right, so we will couple and connect. Release the handbrake. And we'll cheat this up as much as we can to the fouling point of the turnout in the crossover. Alright, now we're going to run around our train and get up front. Alright, now we'll uh, push forward, 7776, seven, push forward, two car lengths. Well, that's good, couple and connect. And we're going to back up. 7776. Seven, seven, we're going to release a handbrake. One more car length. That's good right there. Alright, now we're going to push forward uh, four car lengths. Three car lengths, two car lengths, one car length. And I'm gonna couple up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this string here. Since we ran around, I'm gonna reposition that box car to be at the end of the train. We'll set the handbrake. On couple. And back up. Now we'll come pick up the string of cars here.
Okay, so we got our switching all done. Um, I'm gonna check our uh, work order, our switch list, make sure that we made all our pickups and setouts, and we have. So that's all good to go. Now I'm gonna take care of my car cards. And there was no uh, there was no holdover cars or any kind of switching inside the plant, so we're gonna be picking up all six out of the bill box. All six here. And then we're gonna be dropping these in the bill boxes. And so there you go. They're all set to go. Um, so now we're gonna go do our air brake test and uh, we'll head on back to Brown Show. All right, so we're gonna conduct our air brake test. We're gonna be doing an initial air brake test because our consist has been significantly modified. So we're gonna charge the train line. All right, so we're at 90 pounds. I'm gonna set and hold the pressure. Seven, 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 six, give me a set. Pressure's at 70. We're gonna confirm the pressure on the EOT device. That's at 68. Crew's gonna get out and walk and inspect to make sure all brakes are applied. Now, 7776, give me a release. Brakes released, and we're going to inspect for all shoes released. And our test is complete. Now, our crew is going to get on the locomotive, and we're going to start heading back. Okay, so the SA-39 has uh, reached uh, Lakehurst. Uh, they're gonna call up uh, dispatch and we're gonna get a new Form D to go home. New Form D is gonna be C-103-2, CNE, number 7776, crew the SA-39. Circle, line two, operate in a north direction on single track between Lakehurst and Browns. Dispatcher is JD, time effective on the fast cost gonna be 1,400 hours. All right, with that, we're allowed to Get on to the main. Okay, so for a switchman, it's going to line and lock that turnout for the main. Conductor is going to call dispatch and inform him the condition of the turnout. And we're going to get a cancellation on form DC 102, and that's going to be 1410 hours in the uh, in the afternoon. Dispatcher is Desmond. So we're all set to head back home.
Okay, so we're back in Brown's yard. Time on the fast clock is 14.45 hours. It took about 45 minutes to get back, and uh, crew's ready to go off duty. They're gonna leave the train here uh, for the yard crew. Because you can see the uh, right, arrival departure tracks are pretty full right now. Okay, so there you go. There's the SA-39. Not bad. Um, we got back to Browns at 14.45. We left at 6.20 in the morning. So it was about uh, 8 hours and 15 minutes, give or take. It was long, it was long filming. Uh, yeah, that was a full four hours for me. Uh, I had a lot going on. Uh, running here and answering phones and silly stuff. But, you know... Uh, but that's you know that's how operations go. Uh, you, uh, take it as as you can and pace yourself. And even if it was a four hour op session, it would it would have made it. Um, you know, the actual work went really well. Um, I tried this time. I think it's the first time I did it on camera. And after one of my operators, Cody, did it, I was like, I think he cheated. He brought the he brought the end of train car in and was able to turn it in the facility. And I would never been able to do it. So that's kind of why there was a little extra time because there was a lot of staying around head scratching. But you can pull it off. I, I thought I thought Cody was, was cheating. But uh, so I, I proved it. It works. Um, even though that little runaround is only about four car lengths, uh, you can still get it done. So um, very good. Uh, tracks running really good up there in there. Uh, it was just a little, a little dirty. I had to take some pauses with the camera to clean the track. And that's because, you know, over this little shelf over here doesn't get constant use like the main line does so i mean otherwise uh, I, I don't think i'm going to touch that track configuration definitely going to stay the only thing i may do is i may cheat and cut the because behind that wall there is a piece is double sheet rock there's sheet rock here and then there's a gap and sheet rock when i do the scenery there i may open up a square to give me about another car length that would make the the job a little easier um, and also allow me to maybe stick one more car in there to get the, a longer train. So uh, gonna think about it, and uh, but we'll see. I can't wait to get to this area. The, 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 when I get the scenery done there, it's gonna be really cool to look at. So that puts a wrap on this one. Um, next time we are going to be running the SA 35 and 37. We're gonna do the combo video because it's two trains at once. And um, just to let you know, uh, the session's already been filmed. I, I did this over a period of five days. Um, and just got was able to get it all done and now I'm just going through it edit it I have it all edited up and I just wrap up the videos here as we go each month so um, yeah next next scene is next session is going to be the 35 and 37 so that's all I have for you this time be sure to like the channel and subscribe if you like this video because uh, uh, I'm planning on doing a lot more I'm not gonna take another break like I did last time we're just gonna keep going as soon as we do this series of videos going right into another series uh, I'm just having a blast doing these videos I know everybody out there likes them so uh, yeah make sure you subscribe if you like the operations videos otherwise um, check out our Facebook page and Instagram account for daily updates of uh, all the layout progress and any kind of uh, operations that we're doing otherwise uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time Bye.